Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's about two o'clock Wednesday, so it is time for our Facebook Lunch and Learn. We're coming on about week 14 or 15 of COVID quarantine, so I hope everyone's doing well, enjoying the more beautiful weather. Um, I'm looking forward today to discussing with you basically how to approach speaking with your parents about estate planning. So we're going to go through kind of a few ways to broach the conversation, um, why it is important to have this conversation, and some tips that could also be beneficial to your parents to uh, instigate the conversation potentially with you. So uh, my name is Samantha Lyons. I am an attorney at Anea Scanlon and Surignano. Uh, excited for everyone who's continuing to tune in on our Lunch and Learns. It's nice to kind of have somewhat of a conversation with you guys, whether it be from home rem uh, or, you know, slowly getting back into the office uh, with this new normalcy. So let's basically start with the importance of having this conversation. If you've been tuning in the past few weeks, you've heard the importance of having advanced directives, having a last will and testament and all of uh, the wishes that you would put into writing. And now I think it's important for us to kind of have the conversation as to speaking with our family members. So you may have met with an attorney, you may have gone over what all of your wishes are, and you may have executed your documents, but have you told anyone in your family? Um, if you're married, I would assume that you and your spouse probably went to the consultation with the attorney together. If you're single, uh, you know, did you alert potentially any of your family members or your friends who you have appointed to act under these documents that we've discussed and that I'm going to touch on today just as a little bit of a refresher for those who have tuned in before. Um, so one interesting statistic that I found was 80% of people who have done estate planning haven't told anybody. So fantastic, they've taken the step to do estate planning. They've met with an attorney, they've gone over their assets, their income, they've discussed their wishes, they've had the attorney put that into paper and hopefully now they've gone ahead and executed, um, which is great. Now they have all of these important documents, they've put into writing who they would want to make healthcare decisions for them when and if they were unable. They've put into writing who can handle financial affairs on their behalf if they were unable to. But if you don't have the conversation with potentially the person you've appointed or your successors, uh, it doesn't really put you in the best situation because God forbid that crisis arises where you're in the hospital and you're incapacitated. The hospital is going to be asking, well, is there a health care proxy? Is there a power of attorney? If so, where is it? So while we love hearing that uh, family members have done estate planning, it's also the second part, kind of the follow-up, the conversation with your family members to let them know you've done estate planning, potentially giving the card of the attorney to say, look, anything happens to me, you have any questions, this is the attorney. Um, so I would say 85% of the time when I meet with a client and they have executed their documents, when we're discussing kind of at the end whether our office will maintain the originals or they want to hold on to the originals, the follow-up question is always, well, should I send copies to my children? Should I tell my children, you know, that I've appointed them as the executor under my last will and testament? Should I tell my children that they are the uh, successors to be acting under my power of attorney? and therefore, God forbid something happens to my spouse, they're gonna need to step in and they're gonna need to handle my finances. So there is no you know, legally acceptable correct answer. It's, it's a family dynamic personal conversation. I think it's very important to have that conversation. Um, you know, I'm a little biased because I am an elder law attorney. I do work in trust in the states and I have seen consequences of, you know, there's a whole bunch of issues. The consequences of someone not doing any proper planning um, and potentially needing to do an Article 81 guardianship, which we've discussed on prior Lunch and Learns. I have seen um, where there's a crisis situation and somebody has called and said, I think my parents may have done documents. They're in the hospital, they're incapacitated. I believe you guys have done it, but we never actually had that conversation. 
So very important to have that conversation. And yes, again, I'm a little biased because I can say to my parents, hey, mom and dad, when's the last time you updated your documents? You know, I don't feel uncomfortable having that conversation because we have that type of comfortable dynamic. And mom and dad, if you're watching, hello. Um, and also I can stress to them the importance of the consequences that I have seen and why it's very important to protect themselves. So I think one of the ways to kind of have the conversation is you're not going in to say, hey, mom, dad, have you appointed me as your executor? Am I the power of attorney? I want to make sure that I am able to have the control. You know, you don't want to come in um, intense about the conversation. It's more you want to be aware if you ever need to assist, where are those documents? So again, this is kind of a family dynamic, personal conversation of what are you gonna be more comfortable with, your mom, your dad, maybe it's your aunt or your uncle, your grandma or your grandpa. Um, for grandparents, it could be you're at their home. You're visiting and maybe they've asked you to help move some furniture or to help get some documents they have up in the closet. So kind of having the conversation of saying, you know, uh, grandma and grandpa, I'm organizing all of my finances because again, that's something we have seen in dealing with our clients. One of the most common things a child will say to us is, oh my God, I went to mom and dad's house. They needed help maybe getting onto community Medicaid. So as we've discussed previously, they needed to put together all of their financial documents. They told me everything was in the closet. I opened up a box and I found envelopes and envelopes of accounts. There's no way for your child to know, is this the, you know, all of your accounts? Is this maybe what you have saved and you've shredded the rest? Maybe you've gone online and you're not receiving paper account statements. So all of this is to kind of avoid added stress when we are in a crisis situation. So all of the documents that we have discussed on these prior lunch and learns, again, those advanced directives being healthcare proxy, a living will, a HIPAA form, we discussed the power of attorney, a last will and testament, is because we want to make sure that you're protected and all of your wishes are now in writing when you're of sound mind to give direction to your family member or friend who you have appointed to act. But if you don't have that conversation, they may be nervous to act. They may be uncomfortable to be the executor and to handle your estate when and if it ever went to probate. So you know, circling back to having more of a casual conversation. So whether that be going out to dinner and potentially you discussing your own children. Uh, you know, I have two girls. The conversation could be that I'm looking into setting up 529s and college accounts for them and asking my parents for their advice. You know, what did they do for us? And kind of opening the door to what mom and dad may have done for you growing up as a child and leading to the conversation of, you know, oh, you know, have you guys with your bank accounts, just make sure you guys are joint so you each have access. There's a lot of misconceptions, I believe, sometimes with spouses where if I have a bank account and it's my name alone, my husband doesn't have access to that money solely because he's my husband. If he's not a joint account owner, he can't go on to my bank account statement. He can't go to the bank and make withdrawals. So God forbid something happens to me and he needs to access those monies uh, because there's auto pay set up for something or he needs to transfer it for Medicaid eligibility. Him solely being my spouse does not get him that immediate authority. So it's very important to kind of also have that conversation with mom or dad because of the misconception that solely because you are married, you each have equal access to each other's assets. Uh, same goes for retirement accounts. Uh, the retirement account is going to be titled to your name alone. So unless you have appointed an agent under a power of attorney, it's going to be very difficult when the other spouse calls, uh, let's say MetLife, and wants to inquire and ask questions about that account. And we see this a lot when we are assisting family members with Medicaid applications. When they're calling to obtain that payout number for the required distribution, when they're calling to obtain account statements, the first questions are gonna be, well, are you on the account? Are you an authorized user? And do you have a power of attorney? So 
maybe mom and dad aren't comfortable, you know, disclosing all of their assets and income to you. Again, every family dynamic is going to be a little bit different. Some families, you may know exactly what mom and dad have. You may be joined on those accounts. They may have told you that you are the beneficiary. Other families have absolutely no idea what mom and dad have in terms of bank or retirement accounts, life insurance policies. Um, so the conversation could be not so much having them disclose it to you, but a recommendation of saying, you know, mom, my close friend just went through a really difficult time with their parents, uh, potentially getting them Medicaid or due to a hospitalization and kind of broaching it in the subject of, well, my friend went through these difficulties and I think, you know, so we make sure we're on the right track and we don't ever run into these issues that I saw he or she went through. The recommendation to have mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, you know, aunts and uncles make a list of all of their financial accounts and the titling of those accounts. And maybe they just put it in a folder. They don't have to turn it over to you, but they should tell you, okay, I have this filing cabinet in that cabinet is going to have a list of all of my bank accounts. Um, some people choose to put their passwords if they have online accounts. That way, if God forbid, you know, they're in the hospital and a bill needs to be paid, uh, son or daughter is able to help them continue to pay those bills. Um, again, this is where we also would recommend and discuss the power of attorney giving you the legal authority to be able to contact the bank. But if you don't know where these banks are, you don't want to go on the wild goose chase of going into every branch. Especially now during COVID, we don't really have that opportunity to walk into our local branches and explain, God forbid something happened to mom or dad. Here's a copy of their power of attorney. Here's their social security number. Do they happen to have an account here? This can all be avoided if you know that mom and dad have a secure place where they've essentially listed their assets and how they are titled. So depending on how comfortable you are continuing the conversation, you can again broach it in the fact of referencing it to a friend. So whether you have someone who's gone through difficulties in probate or when a family member passes, or if you just kind of make up a little bit of a story where your friend unfortunately had a family member die the family member did a will, uh, but they hadn't updated it in 30 years. So there's so much family drama that your friend's telling you about because, you know, there was a child who wasn't supposed to be getting any money, but the parents never updated their estate planning, and now they're going to be inheriting. So again, you know, it's avoiding the drama, the stress, and the tension in the family members when you are in the crisis and grief situation. You know, when a family member passes and you are learning at that time what their assets are and you're maybe learning that that asset was titled to the person's name alone, there wasn't a beneficiary. Okay, well now that account is essentially frozen. You're not gonna be able to access those monies until you now petition the surrogate's court. So if they have a will, you're now gonna have to find out where is the original will. Did mom and dad keep it? Is it in a safety deposit box that now is essentially going to be sealed because of their passing? Does the attorney have it and now you have to contact them and provide, provide an original death certificate? Kind of avoiding all of this wild goose chase in the time where you're grieving because, you know, a family member has just passed is going to be super beneficial by having these unfortunate, uncomfortable conversations. Again, in some families, it could be awkward, it could be uncomfortable, but it's very important to have this conversation, to know that whether today you have the conversation and you know what the assets are, or you know that mom and dad or family member has made a list for you. So maybe they don't want you to know the, you know, all of the accounts and the amounts. Some people are very private and that's okay but at least they're going to make a, a trail for you to say that I have Chase, I have Wells Fargo, and you know there's beneficiaries on those accounts. A lot of times, you know, parents, when they're meeting with us about their estate planning, they wanna make sure everything is taken care of. You know, when they pass, that their funeral is going to be paid for if they haven't done a prepaid funeral agreement. And they'll say, well, it's all going to be in my will. My will will say that my son is the executor and he's going to have full access to everything. 
So as you know, you've heard on the prior Lunch and Learns, having a last will is great and highly recommended. But again, that will is not going to be a valid recognized document until it is filed in the surrogate's court and we have the executor, you know, granted the authority to act when they get letters. So mom and dad may be thinking they're doing the right thing by putting everything in writing, but having the conversation of, you know, either being joined on the account or having a named beneficiary to give the context of this is your wish when you pass, but probating the will, there's going to be delays. So I may not be able to access those monies. You know, it again circles back to a conversation that the parents will also have with their elder law attorney. Um, but sometimes giving the perspective and context with the family member helps to kind of understand that, yes, you're trying to set everything up for the family, you know, to continue your legacy and what are the values of the family but to understand how you have everything set up, how that's going to essentially play out when you pass. Um, so once you get comfortable having the awkward conversation, you can kind of broach it also with discussing with mom or dad that you're gonna go see an attorney, that you, know, you think it's time for you to do a last will and testament because maybe you have minor children and you want to appoint guardians. You want to make sure that, God forbid, something happens to you and you're incapacitated. Uh, maybe you're hospitalized for a period of time. That someone is going to be able to handle your financial affairs for you. That you have appointed a person to make your health care decisions for you. And kind of explain to them how you're taking those steps and see if they then offer that they've already done so. If not, maybe then you're just going to flat out ask, you know, have you guys met with an attorney you probably did wills when I was a child appointing a guardian, but have you updated those? Um, you know, I joke around with my parents all the time about making sure that all of their stuff is up to date, that they are joined on accounts, they have beneficiaries, just very uncomfortable discussing with your parents what their assets are, but it's to protect them. You know, your mom and dad, grandma, grandpa have worked very hard um, their intentions generally are to continue on a family legacy, to uh, make sure certain things are set up either for the other spouse. And if they continue to be super private and they don't disclose a potentially a place where these assets and titling are set up, it's going to be very difficult when, God forbid, they're incapacitated or when they pass. Um, so it kind of opens the door if you put yourself in the shoes of, I'm doing my estate planning or, you know, my close friend actually just met with this attorney who is drawing up for them these certain documents. Have you ever heard of a power of attorney? And giving them kind of the brief synopsis of what it does, because you're potentially now planting the seed if maybe mom or dad has never done this planning. Um, a lot of us, and I, I hear this from clients a lot, I've, I've wanted to do my will for years. I, you know, I know who I want my assets to go to but I, I just never have gotten around to calling an attorney and sitting down. It's always on my list, but I haven't gotten to it. And unfortunately, I would say that's very common. So maybe when you have a child uh, or a family member who is now kind of bringing the context and perspective back to you of the importance of doing this planning, of making sure all of your wishes are going to be honored when you are, God forbid, incapacitated, what are your end of life decisions? You know, whenever we are meeting with a client and they're executing their living will and the healthcare proxy, I will always say to them, make sure you discuss with your healthcare proxy what your decisions are. What do you want in terms of organ donation, uh, tube feeding? Uh, you know, the DNR is generally done in the medical profession and it's done by the doctor either at a hospital or your provider, but it's important to have the living will if your God forbid in a comatose irreversible position, you don't want to be kept alive by extraordinary measures. If you don't have these conversations with your family members, we don't want them now in again, the crisis scenario where they're uh, either not allowed in the hospital right now due to COVID and they're calling their doctors. And if they say, I don't know what mom and dad wanted, they never discussed this with me it's gonna lead to some potential issues. You don't wanna be in that position. So very important to have that uncomfortable conversation now 
when you're of sound mind and you can kind of hash out uh, what your wishes are to learn what your parents' wishes are. And again, even if at that initial conversation, they don't share with you what their wishes are, you've now planted the seed to get them kind of thinking about what they want to do, potentially what they want to update, um, and giving them the perspective of, I always like to kind of relate it. So again, going back to the my friend situation example, giving the context of somebody close to you who may have went through a horrible time because they didn't do planning. They didn't disclose of their assets to anyone in their family. Or they did planning and they didn't tell anyone, you know, who the attorney was or where their documents were kept. So it could be casual. It, it, it doesn't have to be a super scripted, asking a whole series of questions. It could be, you know, just planting that seed in a few questions about potentially, uh, you know, if they have a investment manager, uh, you know, the last time they've met with them and touching base to make sure that everything is set up that there's beneficiaries on their retirement accounts, that the estate is not listed as the beneficiary. Um, another misconception a lot of times is with the estate being the beneficiary, oh, well, my will is going to take care of it. So my will leaves everything to my two children equally, so I don't need to put on a beneficiary designation on my IRA. You know, my uh, the financial advisor told me it says my estate, my estate is my two children, fantastic. While that's true, again, that's going to lead to delays if we're now having to probate your last will and testament, um, and we're going to have to get the authority of the executor to act, and then we're going to have to wait to see if there's any objections. So that can all be avoided by adding the two children as the beneficiaries. Now they just have to provide the death certificate to the financial institution. So I think, again, giving that perspective and that context is going to go a very long way. Um, because we all know that a last will is important. You've all heard, you know, over the past few weeks how important it is to have all of this planning. But I think people needing to know what their values and wishes are to be aligned with the planning that they have. So it's the first conversation with the attorney who's doing the drafting and the execution. And then it's the recommendation of the follow-up of having the conversation with the person you've appointed as the healthcare proxy reviewing with that person what all of your wishes are. The person you've appointed as the agent under your power of attorney, letting them know if they don't where all of your accounts are. You can give them the authority to act as the agent under the power of attorney, but lessen the burden on you know not sending them on this wild goose chase by letting them know these are where all my accounts are that I'm going to give you the authority to act in my best interest. God forbid I can't. Um, and just having this very clear conversation. So I hope that was helpful. Um, again, there's not really a wrong or right way to have this conversation. Everyone is gonna be a little bit different based on their own family dynamic, based on the level of conversation you may already have with your mom, your dad, your grandma, or your grandpa. But I think perspective in terms of what could go wrong or what stressors and more burden could come across if you don't have this conversation and you don't plant the seed to mom or dad is very important to kind of give the bigger picture to them. So whether that be, you know, now having them call an attorney to kind of take the first step to get planning done, that's fantastic. That, I mean, it's going to go a very long way. Um, so any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We are slowly reopening pursuant to the phases of Governor Como. Um, so you can give the office a call at 914-948-1500, or you can always reach out to us via email. Everyone stay safe, and we're all looking forward to be able to meet in person, um, but glad that everyone's still continuing to tune into these Lunch and Learns. Thank you.